Father General, thank you very much for being with us. We learned over the weekend of the death of uh, former Father General Peter Hans Kolbenbach. Uh, I wonder if uh, you could let us know your reflections on his life and his legacy. Well, I have a, a, a very good relation with him. Uh, I, I can feel him as my brother mm. and my father because being, uh, I, I knew him in the General Congregation 33. I was the youngest elector in that congregation and I, we made a, a very nice uh, relationship from, from this point. And then as general, I feel him as a father, really as a father. You know, he was really very, very respectful for your opinions, uh, very dialoguing. Uh, he knew very well the situations. You can, you can present to him any problem and he will give you, always say you are the provincial, you have to decide. <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, how do you think his uh, time as general will be remembered? Well, I, I think it was a very long, a very long term in a very complex uh, church situation, in a, in a situation where, where, where it was not, not easy to do it. So he, he made this, uh, this kind of tension between be, being in fidelity to the Pope and being fidelity to the discernment of the society about the mission, faith and justice. And I think this is a one one important dimension. Another one, and I think he he opened the society to the dialogue with the with all the cultures, and especially the interreligious dialogue. His experience as a as an Armenian specialist of uh, his Oriental rights. He was rector of the Instituto Orientale before becoming uh, general. And so he was very aware of this, the importance of the other traditions, different of the Latin tradition in the church. So he opened ourselves, the society, to that dialogue and the interreligious dialogue and also to the cultures. I think in the society, in during his 25 years as a general, became, became real a uh, multicultural body of the, of the church. And this, of course, is the body that you are now charged with leading uh, as the new Father General, Superior General of the Jesuits. Uh, how did it feel when you realized that you had been elected General? Well, I feel in peace, in peace. Because, uh, as you know, uh, many, I don't know if everybody knows the, the, the system that the society used for the election of the General is a very a very peculiar one, no? So it's a, it's a time of, of praying, of discernment, of uh, dialogue of, among the people, the electors, in a very, in a very spiritual level, no? a very uh, deep spiritual level. You really make the, the movement of being in the hands of God. If we, if we take seriously that uh, the Spirit talks in the, in the election of, the brother, of, the, of, of your brothers, that gave me peace. If it was not my desire, it was not my, my plan, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want to do that. So it's really a, 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 like a call no? from, from, from the spirit through my brothers, the society. So I suppose the same spirit that made that movement and the brothers who put me here will help to, to uh, move on in the in the, in the society mission, the society's mission. So, in the sense of Saint Ignatius, she felt real consolation in that moment. Sure, but you know the consolation is a very tricky movement, no? Because my 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 image of the consolation is Jesus after the Last Supper, before the Passion. No, that's that's the real consolation. Yeah. He was asking not to have to do that, but if it's your will, I will, I will, I will do it. It's freedom, not necessarily yes. happiness. Or... Yes, 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 it's not a, a superficial, superficial happiness. It's a kind of of really feel you are in the hands of God and, and you want to do His will. And how did you discern God's will um, to enter the society? Where and when did you decide to become a Jesuit? Why, well, I. I you know, 
when, when you get in love, you after that, you try to explain why. So I, I, I first get in love with the society and I decide to go to the novitiate. And then I can explain, after that I can explain, maybe I two kind of, uh, of reasons or two kind of movements in my life. The family and, and the, the Jesuit school when I, when I studied for 12 years. Both uh, were open doors to the, to the situation of my country, Venezuela. So I learned to see the others from my family and from the, um, from the Jesuit school. To be in context, not to be alone, not to, be, not to, to try to make my own plan. You know, I, I remember my father usually says, nobody can be good alone. If we cannot, as a family, be good if the country is not good. So we have to, 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 have to, to contribute to the transformation of the country. We have to help the others. So it's the way to be ourselves in a, in a good situation. I entered the society in 1966. So uh, it was the, the pre-Vatican II Council and, the, and the, the time of the Council. It's a time of great transition. Yeah, so it was a, a very movement uh, within the church. And also in the, we were in the, in the San Ignacio uh, uh, School of Caracas. They were, was, they were very good, good uh, young Jesuits in making the regency. And they put us in touch with the, with the people, with the, with the countryside people. We went to the, to the, in the, in the holidays, to the barrios in Caracas, to the hospital. So that, so when, when I, ask myself, what can I do? What can I do to contribute to the process of Venezuela to be uh, a better country? I said, by being a Jesuit is a, is a very good option. And I want to underline this, being a Jesuit, I have not a priesthood vocation, I have a Jesuit vocation. The priesthood is part of, but that is not the, is not the, 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 the fundamental uh, option of my vocation. A fundamental identity was and remains as yeah. a Jesuit. Yeah. yeah, yes. I'm reminded of what Father Arupe said when he said that nothing is more practical than falling in love. Right? <laughs> <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> How significant is it that um, you are the first uh, Father General from the New World, from Latin America? And how significant might it be that, that you're, you are also serving under the first Pope from Latin America? Well, I think that's, that invite us to see the Latin American Church. Uh, uh, Jorge Mario Bergoglio, Pope Francis, and myself, we are sons of a church, of a living church. The Latin American Church has, has made a very nice process after the Vatican II. We were formed in that process, uh, the Pope and myself in different points of Latin America, but when we hear talking, uh, I hear talking the Pope and I hear myself, we are in the same humus, the same, the same uh, experience, no? that experience that take very seriously the, the face of the people, take very seriously the, the community life as, a, as, the, as the base of the community, of the church life, take very seriously the, the respect for the others, and very seriously the, try to, to make the social justice a practical uh, commitment of, his, of, the, of the church, of the society. He has also stressed um, mercy as a theme of his pontificate. In fact, we just concluded the, the year of mercy. Mm -hmm. um, but it has really emerged as the principal theme of his papacy. Uh, how can the society embody this um, mercy to which the Holy Father is calling us? Well, that, that's a, a, a convergence between that movement of the, of the Pope and what the society has been reflecting in the last two years. When Father General Nicholas asked the society, what are the calls you feel in this moment? Most of the provinces of the society respond with that word, reconciliation, because in everywhere, Jesuits are living in, in, in very difficult situations. The society is very divided. 
with wars or with political division or ideological divisions. So the, the Jesuits are feeling that that is a, is a very crucial point in this moment no? to, to contribute to the reconciliation. And we can link, link very easy that with our tradition. And the formula of the Institute is, is the word. We want to be Minister of the Reconciliation. St. Ignatius wrote that. And the General Congregation 32, when, when they find the mission of the Jesuits as the promotion of faith and the, and the promotion of, the, of justice, also say that the Ministry of Reconciliation is a part, an essential part of making justice. So, mercy is part of the reconciliation. You cannot reconciliate people among themselves or, or societies or, or, making, or making peace or reconciliate with the creation without the mercy. So, for us, for the Society of Jesus, the mercy is to reconciliate, to really contribute to the reconciliation of the world. People, societies, the creation and God. It's not possible the reconciliation with God with all, all the other dimensions is impossible. And in fulfilling this uh, mission uh, and this mandate that the Holy Father is giving us, I'm mindful of the fact that he is also a Jesuit. <laughs> and um, what, are, what are the unique opportunities or challenges that the society faces in serving under a Pope who is a Jesuit? Well, in this moment, it's a pleasure because he's not only he's a Jesuit, he's a is a very open man. Is a very person. Is a person that likes to communicate. A person who likes to to dialogue, to to discuss the the, the situations, and uh, very easy to con contact him. Very clear when he, he gives his opinion. So I think it's a it's a an opportunity for the society to be really uh, encouraging in 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 their serv service to the to the Holy See. No, we have served to so different popes, different personalities, and in this case, is a, a a very a very good connection, a spiritual connection between because he knows and he practices very well this, the Ignatian spirituality. When he talks, he talks all the time about that discernment, about consolation, about desolation, about reconciliation, and also is a person that is very. A commitment to the Vatican II view of the Church, all the the synodality, the the this is a co-responsibility. He's a man that understands very well the the role of the religious life in this in the in the Church. So for the society, is really an opportunity to, to be used as Saint Ignatius. Uh, likes to say, the Pope know, knows very well how can use the Jesuits and the Society of Jesus to the service of the Church. The, you use the word convergence, and it, it also occurs to me that uh, the Pope said recently that it takes about a hundred years for the Church to appropriate the teachings of a council, like the Second Vatican Council, and he said, and we're about halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> we're and, in the 50s. Yes, exactly. Fifties. <laughs> right. And, um, and it's also the case that the Society of Jesus itself is also in this process of still uh, learning from that experience and from the teachings of our own general congregations about um, our own our own deepening our own charism, uh, our solidarity with the poor, and so forth. And so there's a way in which that the the society and the larger church can dialogue with one another through that experience. Yes, it's an, really an opportunity, you know, the uh, in, in the theologians use the, the word kairos, no? As a, it's a moment that will not be another one in the history of the society and the church. So we are really uh, in, uh, before an opportunity and so we have to respond to that with all the best we can do. And in responding to that, we have to ask ourselves, where, where are the lights and the shadows in our lives? And uh, um, from, from your vantage point, um, what are what are the lights and shadows in Jesuit uh, life today? Well, it's, it's not easy to to, to make a, a overview of the whole society. But first, I think what I've, I mentioned before the multiculturality of the society. You know, the Jesuits are people 
from all, all over the world and so many different cultures. So the, the body itself is a very rich uh, experience of uh, interculturality or multiculturality. And that's a challenge also. The challenge is how we take advantage of that to really uh, be a sign of the possibility of the in relationship between the difference in the world. In contrast with a globalization that tends to homogenize us, no? the, to be everyone have to be the same uh, uh, way of doing, way of life. No? The, the society is experimenting in, it itself the possibility of the difference to enrich people with the difference. So that's, that, that's one, one, one big light. No? I think it's a very big light. Also, I, I, uh, I would say it's a, it's a light in the society, disponibility. People is willing to, to move, is willing to, to move, not only to move geographically also, but to move from one style of doing things to other style of doing things. Not, we are learning, we are learning how to, we, we, were, we were used to do education in this way and we are learning to do it another way. Uh, that means uh, with the media and also with other people in collaboration with others. So we, we are, we are uh, learning a lot of different experiences in, in the world. And people is willing to do it. The disponibility is another, another important light. Uh, I don't know if it's a shower, but it's a challenge at least. How we plan this. So I think one of the, the we have to to learn in the society is planning, apostolic planning, but we need to plan. We need to plan. We need to know. What we have. We need to to have the, the uh, an idea of what we want. We can do in, in the next 10, 20 years. We have to do have a plan to evaluate if we are doing what we want. Why do you think that is? Why do you, why do you think we're not so great at planning? Well, it's my experience. I'm 50 years in the society. <laughs> I did not arrive yesterday. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I know how, how, how we can make decisions and we make decisions in a very different way of planning. And it seems to me also that the, the challenge with our institutions is what in, in, a, in a time when there are fewer Jesuits uh, in our institutions, our colleges and universities, how do they maintain a Jesuit identity? Yeah. Um, yes, you know that the, the, the number has never been a, a problem for the society. But I think for San Ignatius, the problem was there were too many. So he, 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 you, you remember, he always talked about the minima, minima compañía. So the, the idea of the, of the, of the founders was a, a, a group with a big mobility and a capacity to do things with the small resources, no? And I think we are going in that direction. We are, we are, we, we need to have to be, to be the number. If we are many, they are very welcome. But our problem, problem is quality of the Jesuits. Quality, the, not the, quantity. The, the quality, the spiritual quality and the intellectual quality. No, we need two legs to, to walk. Spiritual deepness. Father Nicholas underlined all the time that yes, we have to be people of God, people really uh, with the roots in the in the in the God experience, and 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 you have to to grow all your life in that dimension. You you never you never finish. This is a, it's not a it's not a problem that that. Uh, 10 years or 20, all your life, you are changing and you are deepening in the experience of God. And this is the, this is the life of the society today because we have to be people of faith. We, 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 our our, our uh, sense of life is the faith. We are, we are in the hands of God. And the other one, the other leg, so we can walk, is intellectual deepness. So the, the society of Jesus since the, the foundation is a, a group of people who thinks, you know, thinks. And that's a big risk to think. It's a big risk. Yes. So 
and we have to, to, to and we can uh, risk because we have the faith, but we have to do both at the same time. I wonder if you, um, I wonder if you have a favorite scripture passage or part of the spiritual exercises that you might like to share. Oh, uh, that's a nice question because I have a spirit, a uh, Bible uh, quotation maybe, but also not Bible quotation in the exercises. And I like very much when I like very much Saint Ignatius after the resurrection of Jesus. He he proposed a meditation about how was the the encounter between Jesus and his mother. He started the Bible, and so he also said, "But the Bible supposes we don't have intellect, and we, it's more or less obvious <laughs> <laughs> that the first of course. person where else would he? he would, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a very nice intuition, not the Bible." That, uh, I like very much that in the exercises. Also, the last contemplation of the exercises. Oh, it's not in the Bible. The contemplation to gain to gain love, and uh, I think it's a it's a very profound way of finishing the exercises. But also, I, I stop a lot of time in the Annunciation. That the scene of the Annunciation is a. Is a very enlightening one, no? So that, that that dialogue between Mary and the angel about how how things can happen. Oh, this is not possible because I'm not married. But so bad that you have faith, no? It's nothing. It's impossible to get. More or less, that's how what, the faith we need to go with this society's mission. Father General, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much, Lord. And our prayers are with you as you begin this ministry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's not in the Bible. The contemplation to gain to gain love, and uh, I think it's a it's a very profound way of finishing the exercises. But also, I, I stop a lot of time in the Annunciation. That the scene of the Annunciation is a is a very enlightening one. No? So that, that that dialogue between Mary and the angel about how how things can happen. Oh, this is not possible because I'm not married. But so bad that you have faith. No, it's nothing. It's impossible to get. More or less, that's how what, the faith we need to go with this society's mission. Father General, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much, Lord. And our prayers are with you as you begin this ministry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.